my question is the same for all of you. Is your journey? How did you get to this point? And what was your training and, and or who were your mentors that inspired you to, to push on? Uh, I came out of theater, um, more avant-garde theater, and then into, um, you know, doing a lot of uh, kind of the transition of also doing um, music videos and rock and roll and was lucky enough to uh, meet David Byrne, who was about to make his first film. And he said, you want to do a movie? And I said, yes. I'd love to get off the proscenium stage. <laughs> and uh, I did my first film, True Stories. with, And then it just kept going with film. So it was a, a very interesting, linear you know, kind of path. Uh, and then stayed in that world. I was working in San Francisco in magazines, and it was owned by Francis Coppola, and I was breaking up with my boyfriend, and I needed to get out of town. And he said, well, how about a job in, in, in Oklahoma on a movie called Rumblefish? And you get to choose. You could be the assistant to the producer, or you could be the art department coordinator. And I chose Dean Tavalaris. And Dennis and I are old friends, so it was a natural. That's pretty great. <laughs> All roads lead to. Uh, yes. But yeah, sometimes circumstance really helps us out. <laughs> it's perfect, and you were meant for this. Um, so you had so many iconic places that you needed to restore. Um, and I realized, I didn't realize at the time that you were a native Angelino, so I'm sure some of it is good memory. But how did you approach, how, was, how did you research and approach the changes you had to make, even on the street where we are right now, right? Well, I mean, that's where most of it was. Um, you know, again, uh, as Dennis said, it started with a great script. In this case, Quentin's um, love of this city, which is so infectious that it's unbelievable. I mean, his everything about him, he really wrote into this script of what made him a filmmaker. So, you know, there was sitting with Quentin, you know, we drove around within the first two days of me starting because he had, you know, uh, let's get out, let's look, let's, you know. Uh, and what I loved about um, his imagery in his brain, and he was, you know, six, when he was at the same, in 1969. But it was, um, you know, he would say, you know, I remember, um, you know, you could, you could go into Grauman's and you, you went to a little machine and it popped out a little wax thing of Grauman's and, you know, all these things as you're driving with him. Just, and you did the Moldomatics, you know, which I loved as a kid too, you know. So we actually found a Moldomatic. We, we, uh, from Grauman's, but uh, the shot was never in the film. I mean, we have a lot of sets that aren't in the film, actually, because Quentin's film is about four hours and <laughs> 20 minutes, and, um, you know, Sony wasn't going to let him do an intermission, so uh, he, someday that will come out probably on Netflix or something. The extended the, version. The yeah. extended but you know that the way his brain just throws things out, and you start to like collect. Um, and what I also loved is there was nothing in his genre that was of the obvious. You know, in doing something like The Doors, you knew you were going after a rock and roll world of The Doors and L.A. And uh, in this case, for him, it's a really a child's like mind of driving through the valley and. Um, so it, we, it gave us, it gave me a much bigger latitude to kind of pick areas that we could, that wouldn't be of the obvious. Hollywood Boulevard was, we know very much that he wanted um, marquees. To him, it's all about what that look is, you know, as you drive up or come out of a movie theater and the neon's blazing and, you know, what that feels like to, experience to a six-year-old <laughs> yeah but even any kind of a childhood it was the great experience as a kid when I went to Grauman's it was all day you know you went to Grauman's you went to a movie that had an intermission you bought souvenirs 
besides snacks, you know, you went to C.C. Brown's next door and had, you know. So um, really the only thing left in L.A. that you had building structure was Hollywood Boulevard. You know, you still had two-story buildings. You you looked at blocks that you could figure out how you could change the thousands of souvenir shops back into something that used to be. And we... Um, we started with the big stuff because we knew permitting, because we should also say that the shock to me was how fast this film had to happen. You know, that was, I thought we were shooting in like August, and I started the middle of February, and over the shoulder of my first day, I saw a calendar, and I said, what's that May 10th? <laughs> and they said, oh, don't worry, we have to just shoot something Surprise. on May 10th, um, because we have the, you know, and we realized that we had a really short prep on this movie. And I, you know, I, I started my supervising art director. I said, start hiring. I found, you know, I, Nancy, oh my God, I got Nancy. Can you start next week? You know, it's, it, you know we, I moved quick because we had a very quick time period to try to And a to lot of real things. estate to cover between Hollywood a Boulevard lot of real and the estate. ranches. No, and, no, it's yeah. the location department, Rick Schuler and his guys. I mean, we just never stopped because permitting is your biggest problem here. And the city was, uh, Besides Hollywood traffic. was incredible um, uh, at letting us permit this. I mean, that, it took a lot, a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, breakdowns. And then the icing on the cake was locations took uh, Quinton to the big, you know, Chamber of Commerce meeting and brought him out, literally out of a closet. They hid him in a closet, <laughs> which he, he had to sit a Who's broom closet in there? for 45 minutes um, until he almost got claustrophobic. Was that to just calm him down? or? But when he, well, they didn't want the Chamber of Commerce to see him. They wanted to present all the That's breakdown. Right. And then Quentin said, I'll help, what, what can I do? And he says, well, if you came and talked to them, because he is so passionate about this city and the, the, as things are disappearing endlessly. Um, and it, it worked. I mean, when they brought him out, they were stunned that he walked <laughs> into the room. And, and he t talked about his passion. He said, you know, we're, we're losing everything. We are Hollywood. We we need to, uh, this, I'll bring it back briefly to show that. And, you know, he just won them over because they wouldn't let us do um, the length of it we wanted at one time, and that was obvious because of traffic. So we broke it up and did one section, and then months later did the other section and shot that. So, but, yeah, it was, it was something. <laughs> We could never stop either, the tourists. They said you can never uh, you can't inhibit interrupt. people while you're prepping, oh. right. which is no easy feat with giant cranes trying to put the pussycat you know, theater <laughs> back on the... But we worked you know, by night and, and uh, with bringing cranes in, and Nancy had probably the worst uh, prep on that. Painful. But she, you know, we, you, yes. Uh, because it costs so much money to buy locations, and uh, it, it was, we, we had to rehearse everything ahead of time in our warehouse. And then I would just assign, okay, you three guys are going to do these three shops, and you three, and, and on and on down the line. But still, most of the locations couldn't happen until the day before. So it was pretty painful. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you could facade them and put marquees on, but you could not stop their business until like two-day weekend, yeah. right before we closed down Hollywood Boulevard. So it was an army. I mean, you were like Patton with uh, yeah. this <laughs> Military army. Patton with operation. five tons. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, again, because Los Angeles, uh, antiquity here is, I think, 20 years. So going back to 1969 and doing your research and then creating it and finding the things that we take for granted, but they're not even at the flea markets anymore. I mean, where do you pull together those resources? Well, most of uh, the prop houses have closed, unfortunately, the studio yeah. prop houses. But there are a couple that are um, dedicated to period dressing. And of course, we use those extensively. But nowadays, we, you have to buy online. You have to search. 
and, uh, and, and, and buy. And I don't like to do it because you don't know what you're going to get till it arrives. <laughs> but you don't have much of a choice anymore. Yeah, especially for those unique character things that are central to a moment, right? Yeah. Well, and we built a lot of, built Nancy a lot, built a lot of Built a lot of things, know, yeah. Because it was, um, you know, especially with anything that happened with Rick's house, sure. you know, there's a lot of stunt work that was going right. to happen, so we were prepared. And, and you built and rebuilt several western towns. No one's built a yes. western town in this city for a long time. No, that was so a... So they were, must have been pretty sad when you went to scout them. It was sad. It was sad to see, because I didn't even know that Paramount Ranch was down to two little buildings, yeah, and now fires. those are gone now. Yeah. But, um, you know, Universal, uh, we went after to say, look, you know, th this was one of the great studios. Some of the greatest things were one shot here, Gunsmoke, and... Um, but through the years, it had turned into kind of a... It, uh, it looked like Baltimore. It was like stone <laughs> Baltimore. It was weird. Yeah, and the only yeah. thing that ever used it was the tour buses going through. Right. So uh, we asked, could, I said, could I put it back to... And, and make, you know, a real uh, western town again mm -hmm. uh, and add things into it right. and make it... This Lancer was more of a... San Joaquin Valley Western town, so yeah. it had a Spanish bent mm -hmm. to it, and mm -hmm. um, and they let us. Of course, it was you know they were happy to have <laughs> with our money, you know, make uh, now a big Western set again. So yeah, but, they, they depend on the kindness of strangers. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but it is you know it is a studio. What Quentin did love it was that there's a great history. Sure to the back of that lot, and um, it's a shame they keep stripping it away again and making more things for tours, but at least on this, they were excited to maybe get it back to being something that other people would shoot at, too, besides just the tour groups going through. And then you had the Melody Ranch. And then the Melody Ranch, which um, always needs a lot of work. <laughs> um, and that was a, uh, it, most of that was trying to build things back in and to build things that wouldn't fall down on us. Uh, <laughs> they, um, yeah. And some collapsible sure. um, balconies, uh, things like that. So, and it gave us a, a different look because we had, um, you know, the older Rick Dalton shows, which were more like the Riflemen, which mm -hmm. were always done in black and white, and it was that kind of more mining town, you know, look, not a wealthy western town. So it helped us to, because the only other thing you can do is just go and leave the state and, you know, go to New Mexico yes, or something exactly. and, and try to build outside of there. But anyway, we did it inside the state. So you had uh, movies, movie sets within <coughs> movies within the movie and the behind the scenes sets. Um, was there any particular one of those that, um, we know the challenges of all of that, getting the right equipment and all of that, but um, was there one that was particularly, you were particularly fond of, Nancy, that, that or a special? I can't say fond of, but <laughs> difficult wise. <laughs> Um, or the last wasn't as hard. minute, Paramount uh, backed out of letting us shoot the Green Hornet uh, work there because of another film. And so we ended up going way down to Norwalk and, and to an adult education school and a massive, massive undertaking to make it look like a back lot. And uh, that, was, that was, I think we did it okay. <laughs> It was very convincing. It was very convincing. It was ironic that we couldn't use a real Hollywood backlog. That's insane. <laughs> that just the, and it's a sign of the times. <laughs> it is the sign of the times. Yeah. It's sort of depressing. <laughs> oh gosh. And then the Spawn Ranch was a built from scratch, right? Yes. Um, the, the original Spawn Ranch was burned in the 70s, and then they bulldozed everything they could out of there and it's now just an overgrown uh, mound kind of. But we found um, in this the same area of the Santa Susana Pass, um, because we wanted that terrain, that rocky, um, a park that was willing to let us, um, you know, completely take it over for months at a time and uh, build back um, 
the old western town and then kind of all the sheds and the pieces and then George's little house, which, you know, we made up most of that because the only real research, and I had an incredible researcher, Lance Mabon, who started the first week I did too, you know, the, you get all of the police research, which is those shots of them being arrested, and that's the best way to really look at the western town. But then the rest of it, and Quentin had in his head that George had a little house on a hill that kind of looked down at everything. So locations found um, that park, and it had this great little mound, and just was a perfect spot to put. And then we just started um, stakes in the ground. I started plotting out, well, we put this here and this there, and then we we started it um, and played in models first so we could work out staging and horseback riding and all the things that happened, um, that had to happen there. And that was another uh, amazing the, um, that, the most difficult feat. part was uh, the Friday before the Monday shoot, uh, the actor who was cast as George Spawn, Burt Reynolds, I was riding in my car and the radio was on and they announced that Burt Reynolds had died. And it was like, wow. And, 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 and they quickly cast over the weekend and we had Bruce Stern and, and, and in the end that worked out okay, but I, I can't help but wonder what it would have been like if, if it had been Burt. Yes. Yeah, that was a heartbreak. Yeah. Uh, those are the things you can't, you can never I know. Well. The, the ultimate question again is, uh, what would you recommend to others that uh, uh, might want to follow you into this profession? Well, I always, when people, when especially young people ask me, I say, you know, uh, get on a set immediately. You know, be a PA, be, because the great thing of being in a production, whether you're the one just running around with a coffee cup or whatever, is that you learn all these positions. Because some people come to the art department and want to intern and uh, and then we'll send them over with something to take to editing. And they start to hang around editing and they go, yeah, that editing's really neat, you know, and they, and before you know it, you know, ten years later they go, oh, I'm an editor now. It's a so it, you can and same with, you know, sometimes people fall in love with costumes because we send them over to costumes too. It's, it's great to, internships and, um, and being a PA on movie sets is a, a great way for young people to come in and look at what, um, and then lock into something and, and mentor if you can, yeah. Nancy? Be frugal, you're gonna need your money. It's gonna take a while. Spoken like a true mom. It's not gonna happen overnight. And and the, and and then and then you've got to be patient. And and so many young people just think it's going to happen right away. But if you hang in there, it will happen. That's the best advice. <laughs> Thank you so much for some fine, fine work. Can we cue up Parasite, please? <laughs>